Oh, hey, Ari. Austin, what's up, man? How you doing? Doing good, how are you? I'm good, what are you up to? Actually, I'm filming a video for the Connected Learning Summit. Cool. Yeah, do you wanna hang out in a little bit? Sure. Okay, sweet, I'll see you then. See ya. All right. Hi, welcome to Wallingford. This is the neighborhood that I live in in Seattle, just next to the University of Washington. Oh, and my name's Ari. I'm a learning scientist working on my PhD uh, looking at learning in community and neighborhood settings, like I know many of you are. And in this neighborhood in Wallingford, we've got a lot to learn, like how to house people who are living outside, and how to undo some of the racist policies that created this neighborhood and others like it all throughout the country. For my dissertation, I actually organized a participatory design study that took the form of a collaborative filmmaking project to try to help us have better conversations about some of these issues. And uh, I'd like to ask if anybody would like to share what they learned from their uh, neighbor about how we might see Wallingford in the next 50 years. Well, we would like to see it stay the same, obviously. Large single family dwellings, they have to go away because there's no more room and there's so many people. I want the future of Wallingford to be more like its past. That could be something that becomes like the heart of what Wallingford is. See that jet? That's where we're going. <laughs> Nobody knows hey, if it's going to land or crash. Hey. Hope the land. Yeah. Wow, Ari, that movie looks pretty interesting. So how would you describe this project conceptually? Well, the movie, and actually the whole process of creating it, is an example of civic media, which we might define as technologies, designs, and practices that produce and reproduce the sense of being with others toward common good. And in a sense, civic media is pretty common, especially among young people. I mean, we live in a world that's highly mediated. And it's awesome that so many people are posting about civic issues online, except that so much of it is racist, classist, or just cringy. And even if you steer clear of that stuff in your feeds, there's just so much content. And it's organized by these mysterious algorithms that aren't prioritizing the kind of civic media that's building consequential connections. Building consequential connections to civic opportunities and agency also involves tying social media and affinity networks and interests to durable infrastructures and existing institutions. To make civic media sustainable and effective, we need infrastructures that support it. But oddly, there isn't really a whole lot of that infrastructure in place. Well, hold on. There are some pretty great groups that are doing this kind of work. What about Youth Radio in Oakland or Radioactive here in Seattle? They're giving a platform for youth to create civic podcasts. They're airing those podcasts for other youth to listen to, thereby inspiring more people to create civic media that builds consequential connections. No, that's a great point. And actually right now, the city of Seattle is trying out a new medium for civic engagement as part of its update to the comprehensive plan, which guides land use decisions over the next 30 years. A lot of people are commenting on the plan through this online engagement hub. And I like how they're also funding community groups to collect their own data, which they're combining with the online comments to create a more nuanced conversation. So that's a start. There's pretty limited funding available to nonprofits and government outreach efforts. It's got me wondering, can a civic media project actually contribute to civic infrastructure? Could we create some kind of a virtuous cycle where people feel so excited to contribute to a locally focused civic media project that they actually become more engaged? Well, hold on. It sounds like you're describing the visions of Wallingford video project for your dissertation. Yeah, exactly. So what did you all do? 
Well, it started in people's kitchens and their houses, kind of like we are right now, where I sat down and interviewed people about their experiences in the neighborhood. And as part of that, I asked them to map out if they were going to lead a walking tour of Wallingford, where would they take people? Some of these people actually went on to lead public walking tours. There were six tours in all, each with a different theme, like housing or plants or mosaic art. I filmed each tour with help from a few community volunteers. Then I recruited some additional community members to review the footage of the tours and to help come up with a narrative of the film, which was basically like coming up with a narrative of Wallingford. Then we hosted six screenings, each with a different audience. There was a main public screening where we invited community groups like Seattle Public Library. We also hosted screenings for different groups like people living in a local encampment and students at a local high school. The purpose of the screenings wasn't just to watch the movie, but to actually continue the conversations that were happening during the interviews, the walking tours, and the film assembly meetings. So what happened? Well, to take one example, a local civic organization called Historic Wallingford recently petitioned to have a section of the neighborhood designated to be part of a new historic district. And that drew a lot of criticism from residents who were concerned that it effectively was just preserving white settler history. But actually, members of Historic Wallingford were involved with this filmmaking project. And as a result, they were inspired to create new videos that are taking a more critical perspective on local history. That sounds awesome, Ari. So basically what you're doing is using the Visions of Wallingford filmmaking project as a way to bring together individuals and organizations to have more productive conversations about local issues. And in the process, you're helping to create a network of consequential connections whereby people learn how to become more civically engaged and also how to create more engaging civic media. Yes, exactly. Okay, well good luck with that. Thanks. I'll see you later. All right, bye. And thank you for watching. With this video, I'm really trying to embody what connected learning means to me, which is creating media that brings to life these important conversations which span across learning settings and communities. And at the end of the day, it's not really about the media, but about the relationships that we cultivate along the way. I'll see you soon.